Hey everyone! We talked about this in the last video where I mentioned the T55 ring that actually it shipped in the box with this. I didn't expect to get a, an extra blue cloner gun. If you didn't see the past video, I was talking about this Gen 4 Magic My Fair ring, which also has a T55 in it. And I realized, like, I've talked about this and other sort of cheap tools in previous presentations, sometimes warning you about some glitches or some concerns with how they work. If you've never seen that, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So if you can't afford a Proxmark, you're like, well, I mean, that's like $300 and the flipper is almost $200. I just did a flipper video with Modern Rogue. I'll link that below. It was a whole lot of fun. Uh, but you're like, wow, these little cheap things, there's a lot of cheap tools out there. They're like only 40, 30, 40, 40 bucks. I can just do all my RFID stuff with that. Yes, but let's talk about it. This is a real fun one here. Uh, not just because it looks almost exactly like my wedding band. No, this is a very cheap and functional, however, T55 only credential. Uh, again, we can play with it on the Proxmark. We can, we saw it the other day kind of working on this reader. I have it enrolled in our door simulator. There are a few hangups as we have discussed. You may not have seen the last video. I'll leave a link somewhere at the end of this one, but the plane of approach, right? The angle at which it's coming in. If you're wearing this on your hand, you think, oh, I'm just gonna rub it against a reader. That might not work in all instances, especially with this little RP-10. I have found that I have to actually take it off and manually place it horizontally against the coil for it to work. Not the worst thing in the world, but might not be what you're expecting. However, a slightly worse or worse thing that is definitely not what a lot of people are expecting is the fact that this ring came with a blue cloner gun. Uh, we've talked about this before. This uh, showed up in some of my slides. We talked about how it's a very simple device, way cheaper than a Proxmark. You can just kind of read, write, etc., make a clone of something. However, these sometimes will password protect a credential. And that's in fact something we did earlier. Uh, I was just playing with one of our credentials here. This is a basic T55. It's actually one of our hybrid credentials. It has a T55 and a Magic MyFair in there. But when I did a little read-write action with one of my cards, well, let's take a look in the Proxmark. We'll see how this comes up, and then you'll see things you might need to be aware of if you just use the freebie that's included with some of your cheaper RFID purchases. So let's just have a quick lurk at an LF search. We should get a credential in here, and indeed we do. This is just a very regular hid prox credential. And I think if I switch over to decode mode, I probably just populated this with like 1337 or something like that. Yes, facility code 42, 1337. And we can of course see that on the Proxmark display itself. I, I didn't need to switch the door simulator over. And if I want, however, to change the data on this card, let's go ahead and do a little LF HID clone. Uh, we'll give it a bit format of H10 301, like everything else under the sun. Uh, facility code, let's change the facility code to, I don't know, 69, and the card number to 4242. All right, let's give her what for. Okay, let's present that to the reader. Wait a minute. Facility code 421337. Well, that's not what I asked. Maybe I just didn't have it positioned, right? Okay, let's, let's try that again. Let's present it again. Oh, man, what's going on here? If I do an LF search, in fact, we will again see nothing has changed on this card. Well, that's because these blue cloner guns sometimes lock a credential, and that's in fact what happened on here. So if we give this a little LF T55 info, well, that's strange. It says password mode no. I'm not sure why it's saying that, though, because I'm pretty sure we are in fact password protected. Now, I could even take a look at that and tell you, let's do a little LF T55 check. Uh, this is a, one of the newer functions that I really like about the Proxmark. We can go ahead and try, oh, look at that, bang, right off the gate. We're trying literally a dictionary attack of known passwords, and it did like that. It found a password that was set on this card. So there we are. The, a, a lot of these, these are, these are well-known passwords at this point that are just populated in that dictionary attack. So yes, uh, it does seem like this card is stuck in this configuration. And let's say the dictionary attack failed. Let's say we couldn't get out of this. Uh, thankfully though, there are other ways to mess with a T55 and unbrick it, especially if that T55 is, let's say, in your hand. 
So people on the Dangerous Things forum, there's a thread there. Uh, M Walker and Equip, they talked to me on Iceman's Discord. Big props to them and the rest of the community. What we can do, and this is not the first thing you try, I wanna be very clear. The best thing you can do would be first, again, try that check command to try to dictionary attack. You can even do what's called a sniff uh, command. You can trace out what's going on with the, uh, with the writer, try to pull the password out of it that way. That's how we've discovered some of these passwords, added them to the dictionary files. But if nothing at all works, there is kind of a big hammer you can swing, and it's known as test mode. Again, I want to stress this is not the main thing you should try first, or maybe even second. But if you're stuck, you got no other options, you can try this on genuine T55 credentials. Other fake, you know, knockoff credentials doesn't always work, it's not implemented. Test mode can even be disabled in a credential, but most of the time, if you need to, you can kind of take out this tool from your toolbox and give it a good whack. And this is... I don't care what went wrong. I don't want to learn what went wrong. I just want to clear out what's wrong. <laughs> and I want my credential kind of reset back to stock. So what is the test mode command? Well, essentially it looks like this. You're going to write block zero with a nice little data packet. I've seen this actually just be all zeros, which is another thing you can do. We're not going to get way into why you would or wouldn't do it a certain way. But if I just push this through, and right now I've done it on downlink R0 with fixed bit length, uh, you can also run that. You know, if you really want to be careful, you run it as R1, R2, R3, etc. for leading zero, coding reference, etc. cetera. Uh, this one isn't using leading zero. There is, in fact, a T55 recovery script. It's in some packages of the Proxmark code that I've seen where the LUA file, uh, you can run, it'll just, it'll run all these in the different downlink modes. So with test mode run, we should be able to do a T55 wipe. And... If we're trying that now, we've got our default configuration back to the block. Let's try an LF search. All right. Looks like we've got the data cleared off that card. And of course, yes, not implemented because there's nothing there. And one last time, if we wanted to live dangerously, we could go ahead and read that data, write it back to this credential, does it have data on it now? Sure enough, it does. Works over here. And if we checked again, sure enough, we can see there is the password that this particular device happens to set. Well, I hope that was helpful to you. If you have any questions about this, uh, you can always hit me up. But honestly, I'll, again, I'll link down below to some of the threads and the Iceman Discord, the other Discords and other places where people much smarter than me could be of help. Uh, let's do a giveaway this week. Uh, well, this is not my wedding ring, so let me put that back on. And yeah, maybe this guy. Again, if you're a size 18 on a ring, that can be our giveaway this week. I promise you I will not have it password locked and I, I won't be giving this away because that's just a ball of trouble. But, uh, you know, giveaway link, if you're registered once, you're good forever. You don't have to keep doing it. I am definitely a little behind on some of those giveaways. Some of y'all are going to see some emails from me before the end of the year, though. In the meantime, ask me any questions you have here or out in the wild. And, uh, yeah, enjoy this. Hope it was helpful. Mostly, I, I can't tell you how helpful the community at large is. I thank all of them every day and all the people who keep working on all this great code on the Proxmark and elsewhere. Well, there you are. Uh, if you use one of these blue cloner guns or other simple tools that you might get online, I mentioned the Keezy in my pre presentation, right? And your credential stops behaving in the way you wish, you might have locked it. Uh, it is a thing that T55 credentials can support. It's not too hard to fix. We just don't always talk about these solutions. And this, like, test mode, it used to be kind of secret knowledge, and someone said, hey, this isn't documented anywhere, so, like, don't share this. Uh, that... To my understanding now, it's much more widely known. It's not considered secret anymore. But when I talked to people about it, they said, oh, man, yeah, I used a Keezy. And now I got this. I had these cards that I got. and Now I can't use them. I'm like, well, you could just you could reset them. And some most people are like, how do you I don't do you mean like brute forcing? I'm like, no, you can you can just reset them. So if you accidentally bricked a credential, well, you didn't really brick it. You just locked it. This might help you unlock it. I always recommend the Proxmark. Uh, again, not just because like we or other people have them. Like I'm not going to mention our website. I'll mention Garrett, like Garrett and Hacker Warehouse. I mean, we just get them from Garrett and sell them at the same price. But like Hacker Warehouse or other sites or even the Flipper, the Flipper can do a lot of this too. Those are community-driven tools, 
and they don't have these lockout features. Like, you could set a password, but you'll be doing it intentionally, not accidentally. Uh, if this helps you out, just let me know, or better yet, share this wisdom with others who might be stuck themselves. Okay? Have fun and stay safe out there.